In this video, we'll talk about Clostridium perfringens. Now, recall from the most previous video that when we talk about gram-positive bacteria, we subdivide based on the shape of the organism. And recently, we've started talking about bacilli. We can further subdivide bacilli into Clostridium, bacillus, and other. In the previous video, we talked about C. diff, and in this video, we'll talk about C. perfringens, or Clostridium perfringens. Now, admittedly, this is a pretty easy one compared to the other bacteria because there's really only one major clinical association and virulence factor that you need to know. So let's get started. Clostridium perfringens is a gram-positive obligate anaerobe. It is a club-shaped bacilli, and it's spore-forming, which will be very relevant in terms of the virulence factors and the clinical associations. Now, the big high yield here is to know that Clostridium perfringens is associated with something called gas gangrene. Now, gas gangrene is the layperson term. The actual correct terminology is clostridial myonecrosis. Myo meaning muscle or soft tissue. Necrosis, obviously, meaning death of that tissue. So this is when muscle and soft tissue breaks down, and you get this thing that lay people refer to as gas gangrene. Now, Clostridium perfringens causes enterotoxin-based food poisoning in addition to myonecrosis or gas gangrene, but to be perfectly clear, the most high-yield association that you need to know for your exam is going to be this Clostridial myonecrosis, aka gas gangrene. Now, here's what it looks like, club-shaped, if you will, but understand this image. For virulence factors, the major high-yield one that you need to know is alpha toxin. Alpha toxin is a lecithinase or a phospholipase, meaning that it destroys phospholipids. And we have phospholipids in all of our soft tissue. So when this alpha toxin gets released by this bacteria, that toxin being a phospholipase destroys phospholipids. So if it's destroying phospholipids in our soft tissue, that leads to the breakdown of that tissue and hence myonecrosis. Now this happens in areas of the body that have compromised blood supply. And that's very important to understand because it's in those areas that have pre-existing compromised blood supply that this bacteria can grow in because that's just a nidus for the growth of this bacteria. So because of that, when you're taking your exam, the test rater is gonna give you scenarios where a part of the body, usually a limb or an area of soft tissue has compromised blood supply. So this could be things like a recent injury. If somebody was stabbed, if somebody suffered a gunshot wound, if somebody was in a motor vehicle collision, and some area of their body, if that soft tissue was exposed and had compromised blood supply, that can be a nidus for the growth of C. perfringens because it provides anaerobic conditions under which Clostridium perfringens can produce this alpha toxin. Now, once that toxin gets propagated and it further breaks down phospholipids, you get this nasty cycle where the anaerobic condition initially leads to the growth of Clostridium perfringens and then Clostridium perfringens making this toxin that further breaks down soft tissue causes more favorable anaerobic conditions. So what you want to be on the lookout for on your exam are a couple things. One, a pre-existing soft tissue injury that predisposes the body to anaerobic insult and therefore the growth of Clostridium perfringens. And then two, as far as getting this diagnosis correct on your exam, not only do you want to be on the lookout for the classic signs of inflammation, but specific to gas gangrene, gas is in the name. So you want to look for that edema, that crepitus, the formation of those gas bubbles under the inflamed tissue. And if you see that, the test writer is screaming at you that it's Clostridium perfringens. Now, the other thing I want to point out here is that Clostridium perfringens normally exists in skin reservoirs in small amounts, but more so in soil. And because of that, if there's a predisposed injury that occurs in or around soil, that's another buzzword that the test writer could be giving you to be like, hey, Clostridium perfringens is the bacteria here. So all of this stuff is all interrelated. Again, injury to predisposed tissue, anaerobic conditions, formation of this bacteria, further anaerobic conditions once that alpha toxin starts breaking down phospholipids and then the formation of those gas bubbles or the finding of crepitus all of these things are related to clostridium perfringens so i hope that you understand that pathophysiology my mnemonic to remember this is i think of perfume for perfringens and specifically alpha perfume which reminds me that perfringens or perfume is associated with this alpha toxin 
All right. The other thing I want to mention briefly, not as high yield, but there is another virulence factor. There's a heat labile enterotoxin, and this is what causes food poisoning. But because food poisoning is so highly associated with other bacterium, that this, this really doesn't show up a lot on exams. If they're going to give you um, clostridium perfringens, they're going after that alpha toxin and the myonecrosis. Treatment. So to be clear, very important to know that if myonecrosis occurs, you need surgery, right? That's first and foremost, that's the treatment. But the antibiotic choice here would be piperacillin tazobactam combined with clindamycin. So if they give you myonecrosis, the answer is surgical debridement, but you also need to do the antibiotic that you see here. So summary slide, club-shaped bacilli, it's gram-positive, anaerobic, spore-forming, major high-yield virulence factors, that alpha toxin that breaks down phospholipids, which causes myonecrosis and more favorable anaerobic conditions in an already predisposed injury um, that initially gives you those anaerobic conditions. So remember that vicious cycle. And then the less high yield, but still good to know, heat labile enterotoxin that causes food poisoning. Treatment, number one, surgery, number one A, pepericillin tazobactam with clindamycin. So I told you there wasn't a lot to know. I was telling the truth. That's everything that you need to know about Clostridium perfringens.